Hey beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share a prophetic word and give you some prophetic encouragement for the season that you are in. I heard the Lord say, this is just a chapter of your story in the book that he has written for you, in his book. This morning, as I was in prayer, at my local church, I began to pick some things up in the spirit. And there was some people, some women that got brought to my mind and I began to pray for hope. And that is what I heard the Lord said. And then he began to expound on it. The Holy Spirit began to reveal more and um, highlight what he wanted me to say. So I began to pray and intercede for those that came across my mind. And then, but then the Lord told me to share it here. And so God says that he wants you to have a hope and a future. You shall not die in your wilderness season. You shall not die in your transitional season. And I don't mean just a physical death. I mean, your hope, your promise, the thing that you have hoped for, you're not going to give up and you're not going to faint. I speak life into you. I speak hope into you. I heard him say that if for those that are going through a hard season, that this is just a chapter. This is just a chapter in your story. Do not give up. God has an expected end for you. And then he took me to Jeremiah. And we know verse 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, and the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future or an expected end. And that word peace has everything wrapped in it that you will need. A place of rest, prosperity, being at oneness, being safe, being whole. Peace, that word peace, when the woman um, in the book, you be, um, the book of Kings, I was going to say the book of Elijah, when the woman, the Shunammite woman said, it is all is well. She was saying peace, peace. That's the same word, shalom. It is well, it is well that God would make everything well with you, that you would continue to prosper, that you would be at rest, that you would prosper in your soul and in your affairs and everything you put your hand to, that you would be at rest in your soul, that you would dwell in a place of rest and safety and so that you could thrive and live again. And so God has that for you. And so let me talk about this only being a chapter. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah was the prophet who prophesied that the children of Israel were going to go through some things and they were going to go into a time of exodus because or captivity because of their sins, because they had done some things. And I don't know if there's something that you did that brought you into a season of diso that that you disobeyed God and it brought you into a season of captivity or waiting on God and being in bondage or being in a holding pattern where God has to work some things out or if it's something that was done to you that you did have did not have anything to do with because that often happens to women we find ourselves in situations that ourselves in situations that we did not put ourselves in based off of other people's decisions that affected us. But the Bible says time and chance happens to everyone. That is things that we did not expect on timely occurrences that can change the trajectory of our lives. So whether you did it or it was done to you, if you find yourself in a hard season and you are feeling hopeless or you're feeling like you can you can live and you still trust God, but you don't think things can get better than they once were, or you can have a future, but you can't really see how it's going to happen. You're believing, but you're not yet seeing how our path uh, of the to your future carved out. Then this word is for you. See, the children of Israel had gone into the season of captivity and after Jeremiah had prophesied to them and warned them and they had not listened, they end up going into Babylon. But the Lord had a word for them and this was the word and it begins before he speaks to them. He says that to all who were carried away, starting at verse four, 
away captive whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. You get sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may increase there and not diminish. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. Do not let the prophets and the diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which cause, which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word to you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think of towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and go and pray and I will listen. And you will seek me and I will find you and you search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. And I will gather you from all nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Now, let me explain this to you. I wanted to read the word, Lord, bless your word. What happened in that is that God didn't say settle for where you at. Don't hope for the future. Basically, if I could wrap it up, he's saying make the best of where you're at. Seek peace. Keep doing what you know to do in this season. Don't give up and don't faint. Don't give in and say, well, I'm just going to not hope anymore. I'm not going to do anything. No, keep doing things that will help you be fruitful and thrive in this season, even if you're in a hard season, because God is going to bring you out at the set time. Your set time it may not be 70 years. I highly doubt that it is. It may be right around the corner, but this is just a chapter in his book that he's already written for you. And so he's going to bring you out at the set time and he's going to bring you not only back to the land where or the place where he had once been, but he's going to make sure that you have better than what you once had. I think of Ruth and Naomi. And if anybody has watched my channel for some time, you know, that's one of my favorite books of the Bible. Naomi did not get her sons and her husbands back after they died in Moab, but the Lord gave her a grandchild. And when she thought, when she thought her life was over, when she thought that it was done and she was just going to go back to Jerusalem or excuse me to Bethlehem because her sons and her husbands were dead and she said there was nothing else left for her there in Moab the Lord sent caused Ruth her daughter-in-law to go with her back and then the Lord worked good he will make all things work together for your good the Lord worked good in their circumstances and uh Boaz was a kinsman redeemer to them. And we always talk about Boaz, a husband, but truly it was the Lord sent him as part of the redemption of Naomi and Ruth to restore what the enemy had stolen and taken, not in the same way. It did not look the same, but her latter days were greater than her former. And her friends, when she called herself bitter, Naomi, when she got back because she said the Lord had dealt bitterly with her, when truly it was life that happens to us all, things that happen, like I said, that are out of our control. Then her friends, after she came back and she began to focus her mind and doing what she could do in her season, which was helping secure a place of safety for her daughter-in-law, Naomi. And that's what she did when they got back and told her to go lay at Boaz's feet. And she saw something where she could help. She wasn't plotting for her. She was securing. She was doing what she could do for her and her daughter-in-law in that season and really for her daughter-in-law. And it ended up blessing her as well. So when she does that and Naomi and Ruth has the baby by Boaz and they're redeemed and they get her husband and her son's land back, her friends say of her um, as Ruth is sitting there and Naomi with the new baby, her friend said that, Naomi's friend said that 
Her daughter-in-law has been better to her than 10 sons. God is going to give you better. He's going to give you beauty for ashes. Naomi did not get her sons and her husband back. You may not be able to go back and get what you had, but if you keep on walking with God, if you don't faint, if you understand that this is just a chapter in your story and you do not give up and try and uh, end the book here, but you let God write your story, he is going to restore store and redeem and heal you and bring you into a place that is better than what you could have ever dreamt of. I'm sure she may have grieved her children, but she got a grandchild. She had a daughter-in-law. She had been restored and she got her land back. I don't know what God is going to restore for you, but I trust that it's going to be better than what it would be if you wrote your own story, if you decided to stay stuck in an old mindset and not do anything about where you're at. See, they could have just went into Babylon and sat there, but they had a mindset that they were coming out. God told them to have a mindset that they were coming out, that he was going to do something different in their life. And so that's what I want to encourage you. Have a mindset. I don't care what's going on around you. Begin to cultivate a prosperous life, even where you're at, because God has a hope and a future for you. I pray that this blesses you. This is just a chapter in your story and God's book that he has already written for you. Uh, live like it and believe God that he has another chapter. Your story is going to end with a hope and a future and expected end. That means God's intention. Expected end is the intention for what God, with which God created you. He has a purpose and a plan that he wants you to fulfill and he is going to help you to fulfill that if you obey him, if you hearken to him and do the one or few things that he's called you to do in this season. And so I want to challenge you. And if you haven't already, here I go again. I have my free resource, five clarifying questions for every season that help you know what God is calling you to do so you can understand what you should give your time and attention to and focus on those things that he's called you to do intentionally. And then you can recognize and perceive the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons that God has ordained for you in this season that will prepare and equip you to go into your next season. And so you don't want to just sit in this season and complain and feel sorry for yourself. And we go through hard seasons. I've been through some hard seasons and, you know, there's hard things going on in my life on in my life right now but God has a better way I can just imagine the captivity that must not have been fun but he gave them a way out and a way forward and that's what I hope for you for this video to be and to encourage you in is that there's a way forward and then I have my seasons journal which I'll leave a link to that as well which is after you do the five clarifying questions, it will help you record the beauty, blessings, purpose, and lessons that God has ordained for you and to stay focused throughout this season. There's a link to that, but you could take the five clarifying questions free download and you could have your own journal and you could use it there as well. So I just pray that you will take advantage of uh, that those resources, the free and the one that you can purchase and that you would be encouraged in this season that God is going to bring you out in a great way and bless you. God bless you, beloved. Until next time.